That is a highly, highly venomous arthropod in my hands right here. You can really see the true size of this animal. Oh, you can feel all of those legs just gripping you. They're very sharp, very strong. Deep in the hardwood hammocks of the southernmost tip of Florida, there is a terrifying secret. In tucked away strongholds of habitat in the city of Miami, giant, nightmarish arthropods roam the forest floor, searching for unwitting creatures to eat. This is the Caribbean giant centipede, and it is a force of nature. My name is Spencer Hoffman. I'm a biologist and filmmaker from North Carolina on the hunt for the most extreme creatures in the world. And this centipede brings me to South Florida once again. I've worked with these terrifying arthropods in the past, but I'm on a new mission to document all of the giant centipedes in the US and discover their deadly secrets. My goal today is to get hands-on with an absolute giant. And it didn't take us long to find one of these monsters of the underworld. Right here. Wait, 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 I'm almost... Whoa, Whoa he's big, he's that's big. That's a huge one. No, he's still here. He's not, he hasn't moved. Oh, there he is. Oh, I see the head. I might be able to pin the head. I got him. <gasps> oh, there it is. That is the Caribbean giant centipede. Now, he is way stronger than I thought. Good luck getting him off. Working with these centipedes is always a delicate procedure. One small slip up and you're gonna take one of the most painful bites in the animal kingdom. I know firsthand not to underestimate the power of these arthropods. So getting it contained and into a controlled situation is key before I try to handle it. Have a look at that thing right there. That is a huge Caribbean giant centipede. He's actually being quite cooperative. Usually they don't ride sticks quite this well, but look at that. Creature. This is the largest centipede on the East Coast, and actually one of the more interesting ones. Here in Miami, they're, they're pretty big as you can tell, but they get even bigger in the Caribbean islands. And push sizes, they get them in the top five largest centipedes in the entire world. Now, they're one of the largest ones here in the US, but this is about as big as a mainland Caribbean giant would get. Still a pretty impressive animal. These guys are out here in the hardwood hammocks and they are patrolling just like this, using those antennae to search for other invertebrates, but also little geckos and anoles. You would not want to be a lizard in this habitat because that centipede is coming for you. As you can see, their powerful legs allow them to climb super, super well. And that means they can get just about anywhere. They have a flexible exoskeleton, so they can even squeeze in the tightest cracks. If you're living out here, the only reason you're alive is because a Caribbean giant centipede hasn't been hungry enough when you've been around. They are absolutely insane. Now, what I'm gonna attempt real quick, I wanna actually see if I can't free him. He's pretty, pretty calm. So I wonder, I wonder if he'll actually come onto my hand. Let's see. Look at that. That is nerve wracking. That is a highly, highly venomous arthropod in my hands right here. You can really see the true size of this animal. I am quite tall and he is still almost the length of my forearm. Oh, you can feel all of those legs just gripping you. They're very sharp, very strong. It was an amazing grip. I've handled some pretty gnarly spiders, but nothing gets my heart racing quite like a centipede. And this is actually one of my first times properly freehandling a centipede of this size. So you're probably wondering, why do this? Why handle such a venomous, scary looking creature? The truth is, past fear, the world becomes a really rich and fascinating place to live. And getting hands on with a centipede gives us a chance to really take a closer look than we'd normally get to otherwise. Centipedes are part of the order Chylopoda, which means lip foot. This comes from these terrifying appendages at the front of their heads. What look like fangs are actually modified legs. As our friend Clint loves to say, toxicognaths, which are the centipede's unique venom-injecting weapons. These chylopods have been around for over 430 million years, patrolling the forest floor since the Silurian period, and terrifying all life forms that cross their paths. But beneath their frightening appearance, they're actually one of the most remarkable predators on Earth. You know, the first thing that I always notice is just how many legs they have. Now, 
centipede, the name means hundred legs, but very, very few centipedes actually hit that mark of a hundred legs. This guy has a lot though. And something I could never wrap my head around was how an animal with such a simple nervous system could coordinate that many limbs. Like I have a hard enough time coordinating two sets of limbs, let alone dozens. Watching the centipede move, you can kind of actually see the trick to their locomotion. They move their legs in waves. While I can feel all the tiny hooks gripping me, you don't feel dozens of hooks unless he stops and stands still. When he's moving, you really only feel a handful of them at a time. And it's because he creates these single points to the side of his body where multiple legs will converge moving him along in this crazy streamlined motion. I literally had to go back and review previous centipede encounters I've had to see if they do it too. And sure enough, they do. It's super, super transfixing to watch these animals move. And if this encounter is weird for me, I can only imagine how weird it is for the centipede. See, they have eyes. You can actually see close up on its face. They do have these tiny little eyes in the front, but as far as we know, they're really only for seeing light and dark. The centipede does something completely different to understand its world, and you can see it as he's walking over my arm. Those antennae are going crazy. Almost like that one Ben 10 transformation, centipedes understand their world almost entirely through smell and chemical signals. This thing knows that it's walking around on a much larger animal, and it's probably not very happy about it. But this gives us a chance to see even more insane details of the centipede that even I'd never seen before. When we first found this centipede, it looked massive. And then when we got it in the container, it looked small again. And then now that it's here on my arm, it looks massive again. Something that I didn't realize about centipedes is that while their exoskeleton is flexible and helps them squeeze into smaller areas, it also almost functions like an accordion. Centipedes can stretch and contract and this likely also helps them to just compress down into tight spaces when they're burrowing. But it's crazy, their, their exoskeleton isn't the rigid armor of like beetles. They have armor plates along the back, but most of it is actually really flexible, almost more like a wrapper than an armor. And if we look on a few of the segments here, you can see these tiny little holes in the side. Those holes are called spiracles. It's actually how the centipede breathes. You probably never thought about how a centipede breathes because typically when you see a centipede, you run in fear. But getting up close, hands-on with this creature, it is remarkable how many crazy little features that I'm picking up on that I, even after years of working with animals, I've never seen before in person. Even though they are terrifying, as long as you're just a surface for them to walk on, they have really no intention of biting. The reason that centipedes make me so nervous is they're a lot harder to read, and they're a lot more unpredictable than even your most dangerous spiders. I am more nervous handling this animal right here than I was handling things like the Sydney funnel whip. Because you just never know what things are gonna stress this animal out and cause him to do an exploratory bite. The venom of these centipedes is quite inflammatory, very, very painful, even if it isn't necessarily all that dangerous to you long term. It's very unpleasant to be bitten by one of these creatures. The venom of the giant centipede is potent. Some of the larger species from the tropics have been reported to be capable of even killing humans in rare cases. While these North American centipedes aren't life-threatening, the bite is one of the most painful in the arthropod world. For the most part, since they're eating insects and other small invertebrates, their venom targets those systems. But centipedes of this size will take lizards, frogs, and small mammals, so they have toxins that attack vertebrates, too. The worst of these are the myotoxins. Attacking muscle tissue, these cause deep, aching pain and contractions. When I was bitten by the Texas red-headed centipede, the throbbing pain felt like my entire hand had been slammed in a heavy door. I'm playing with fire a little bit here, handling the centipede, but it hasn't shown me any agitation yet. Their antennae are incredibly sensitive, so it knows it's on a larger animal. But I'm not food for this creature. If I don't give it a reason to bite, it won't waste its venom on me. And as you can see right here, even this fearsome looking beast has no intention of doing me any harm. Giant Caribbean centipede, white 
an impressive predator, and a force to be reckoned with. Getting up close at the centipede, we can really see how perfectly adapted they are to be the most efficient arthropod predators on Earth. While I'd never recommend that you try this, I hope that just like me, maybe you learn something new about giant centipedes as well. Even in the most unlikely places, there are always new secrets just waiting to be uncovered. Sometimes even hiding in plain sight. Did you know that many of the insects in our backyards are actually really poisonous? In this video, we get up close and personal with some of the most toxic insects in North America and find out how their different chemical weapons help them survive in the habitats they call home. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.